What is up everyone? Welcome back to the California Wiffle Ball channel and it has been two weeks since the last talk show and it's been a long overdue wait and we are back for a very long video with a lot a lot of information. Now um, since the last time you guys saw me we did play um, we have had the um, the Dinger Nation lose all three games to the Piranhas and um, I think I think you guys didn't see the um, yeah I think that was the only game that we for, that we didn't go over um, but we have to talk about that one we have to talk about the next upcoming game um, which is the um, which is the Sea Dogs and the Golden Eagles uh, we're gonna have to go over some official rosters we're gonna have to go over some stats we're gonna have to go over the updated MVP every P race, some all-star race. So buckle in. It's going to be a long video with a lot of information. So we are going to start off with what happened with the Dinger Nation and the Piranhas. Now these team, these guys are in the same conference, the Eastern Conference, and it was a conference matchup. Um, I wouldn't say rivals, but it was pretty, it wasn't really like I think it was a fun game. Um, you guys might have saw that the games were really boring. Yeah, they were pretty boring. And Digger Nation was losing, lost three of their best players. They were not playing that day. So they had to go down to Keaton and Xander Brown. Um, so they were kind of doomed from the start. Um, Derek was the only player uh, that was on their true roster, so they had to bring him to substitutes, which will be in, um, in an announcement coming up. Um, and yeah, uh, that those games like I I knew I said I wasn't gonna overreact to when the Dinger Nation lost to the Golden Eagles, but I'm still not gonna overreact. I I don't know if Ryan's gonna come back. We don't know if Ryan's gonna play. Let's look at the 2020 schedule and see who Dinger Nation has ahead of them. Um, so the next time Dinger Nation plays the Sea Dogs, and then the Dinger Nation after that. Will play the base invaders. So the record right now is one and five. I think they could potentially take two out of three against the Sea Dogs, which would raise their um, raise their score to three and um, three and six. Then the base invaders, they're gonna lose probably two out of three of those. So they're probably gonna end up with like a four and eight record. So I don't know if I think this game was really really beneficial, and they lost. Like, it was really beneficial for them to win this game against the Piranhas, who were one of the worst teams in the league. And the Piranhas came out and spanked them. Like, it doesn't matter that their players weren't there. That's not the Piranhas' fault. They came out and started 0-3, and, and now they're back into contention and the number three in the power rankings. Number four. Number four in the power rankings. Like, come on. Like... That's, that's Dinger Nation's problem that they need to figure out. It's Dinger Nation's problem. Piranhas came out and Piranhas came out and they've won every single game. Every single game and nailed them. Derek, I, I'm going to react to this guy. He pitched strikes. He pitched strikes. Like, um, you can't say that it was Xander and Keaton striking uh, and swinging at every single pitch. No, Derek struck him out many, many, many times. Let's look at the stats and see how many strikeouts he had. Derek ended up with 19 strikeouts on the day. 19 strikeouts. Bruh, like. And now he has two home runs, 10 RBIs, 296 batting average. I think this man's making the All-Star game, honestly. I think this guy will. Um, but yeah. Uh, good job on the Piranhas for doing their part. The uh, awesome substitute in Jess Vacuna. He did amazing. Um, yeah, if you look at his stats, 550 batting average, 3 home runs, 11 RBIs, 0, 0.00 ERA. And yeah, granted, it is against um, a broken down Dinger Nation team with um, Keaton and Xander. But they took advantage. They hit home runs. They didn't let up one run in the whole series. I, once again, it is not their fault that they're not there. And Dinger Nation will have to suffer the consequences. The most they can do right now is 7-5. and five. And they were saying they want to go 8-4 and four and 9-3. and three. And they ruined their season. They ruined it. 
Piranhas, they're back on track. They are back on track. And I'm very happy for them. Um, the Piranhas are going to probably have a tough um, schedule coming up after the All-Star All -Star break. Um, Piranhas, they next, they next play the Base Invaders. And then after that, they play the Golden Eagles. So it's good that they won all three games today because their next two series is going to be hard. They are going to be hard knocks. It's going to be right up against close games. And, um, yeah, they got some tough, tough opponents coming up. So it was really good that they could get these wins. That's probably the best thing they could possibly do. Um, because, like I said, these next two series is for them. Uh, against the Golden Eagles and Base Invaders, they are going to be tough. They are going to put them against the wall, put backs to the wall, and they're going to make them show their best effort. So, <coughs> like, now we have the updated standings. Red Hawks and Base Invaders are 3-0. and Sea Dogs are 0-3. And then it's Golden Eagles, Piranhas, and Dinger Nation. Something I did not expect... What happened, and yeah, it is halfway through the season for some of the teams. Uh, Golden Eagles haven't played. But if they lose all three, Piranhas would be in first place. You know, I don't know if that's likely because they are playing the Sea Dogs. But um, I think the Piranhas could give the Golden Eagles a bit of a challenge, honestly. Like, the way that, the way that they played, and um, Noah's will be coming, Noah will be coming back, Jacob will be coming back. This team is on the rise. This team is underrated right now. And we're going to have to see what happens when they play the Base Invaders next. Because that's going to be some hard pitching. Brandon Chip and Derek Nabriga. <laughs> Alright. Um, so now we're going to go into the next game analysis. Which is going to be the Sea Dogs and the Golden Eagles. Um, uh, I think the Sea Dogs at 0-3. That's not... I think they're a better team than what their record shows honestly. 0-3, oh, uh, I really like the way that Gavin pitched. Um, I think Matt is really going to implement him more into starting, uh, get him some more innings, um, because Gavin pitched, Gavin pitched like three innings. So, yeah. Really, really not what the Sea Dogs are looking for. I think... Gavin needs to pitch at least five for them to have a chance with the with the Golden Eagles. Because so Bradley, he's going to get his six innings. He will get his six innings. He's trying to win all the games that he pitches. He wants his two wins, and then he doesn't really care about the third game. Gavin is going to have to pitch the game that Bradley doesn't. Because if it's Matthew versus whatever pitcher is not, that's going to be a home run game. And Bradley most likely will win both games that Gavin pitches. So Gavin needs to figure out a way. Matthew needs to figure out a way to put Gavin into the game where Bradley isn't pitching. But Bradley, I would just say try to win as many games as possible when you're pitching. Um, you did bring in a very good baseball player um, and one of the top contending brothers. Uh, Daniel Pantaluglo is number two in the MVP race. He brought in his brother, Damian, to play for Bradley's team. I uh, really like that pickup. He's going to add him some good pitching depth. Uh, before Brody comes back, and I, I really, I really like this pickup. Honestly, I really like this. Um, so it's gonna be Bradley, Bodie, and Damian for this for the games. So uh, I'm really excited for these week's games. Uh, it's gonna be a really, it's gonna be a big grind. That's what's gonna go on these games. It's gonna be a grind. Um, it has been raining all week. It won't Saturday and Sunday. We play on Sunday, so. It's going to be a three-man team, maybe four if we get a sub for them against a four-team. Uh, everyone's, everyone's coming. Maybe Gavin won't. That's the problem. We don't know if Gavin will. But, um, but yeah, we're just going to have to. Uh, I, really, I really think Golden Eagles are going to take two out of these three games. Uh, I just really, I don't really want to see the Sea Dogs losing all three. Um, but, yeah. Uh, now, I am going to go into the updated MVP race. Um, number one is me, number two is Daniel, number three is Ryan, number four is Brandon Chip, and number five is Matthew Sigich. These are all Western Conference players. So that All-Star game is going to be stacked for the Western Conference. Um, um, 
so I did take into consideration that Daniel has played more games than me. So that's why I'm number one, even though some of his stats are better than mine. Um, but yeah, just because he played more games, I implemented that into it. And I think a lot of people would too. At number three, we got Ryan Vinci. Uh, he had two home runs, six RBIs with a 4.64 batting average. Brandon Ship right behind him with a 250 ERA, 630 batting average, highest in the league right there with one home run and seven RBIs. So, like, 630 batting average? You kidding me? Bro, that, that's, that's fire. Like, that, that's just crazy. A 630 batting average. Bro, man. All right, um, so Matthew Sikic, uh, a lot of people were saying that he shouldn't be there because his team is 0-3. Um, I like his batting average at 400. You know, Bradley's not on there. Rocco's not on there. Mikey's not on there. This this league has is a lot more stacked than I actually thought was going to be at the beginning of the year. Like, I thought... The Eastern Conference was going to be a lot better than the Western Conference. Then Daniel came, Ryan Vinci showed up, like played really well, and, and Rocco's doing a lot better than I thought. Um, but yeah, Landon's not doing as well as we thought, and he's only played three games, so that's really a mistake on his part. But um, yeah, now we're going to look at the 2021 stats and the leaders. For all of for all the um, leaders in the stats, so home run leaders, me and Daniel are tied at number four, and um, the website is going to be down in the description. Make sure to go check that out right now. Um, if you click on the link, you will be directed right to it, and it, we have a bunch of pages, including our homepage, official rosters, 2020 schedule, power rankings, stats, All Star game, All Star race, trades and moves, MVP race, 2020 draft. Rule book, YouTube, and other socials. So we have a lot of pages, and I, w I encourage you guys to go check that out. So um, like I said, me and Daniel are the top runners at uh, home runs with number with four. I did not count the Piranhas and Digger Nations game uh, just two yet because uh, that was kind of unfair as Derek's played more games. Um, so just take that into consideration right now. RBI leaders, Daniel is at number one with 15. I'm at number two with 12. Then it's a pretty significant drop-off after that. Um, so 15 and 12 right now is the, um, is the big RBI leaders, which is pretty cool. Average leaders, we got Brandon at 636. Bro, it was just because of the last game that he did. Um, I'm pretty sure he went like 5 for 5 with a walk. Remember that game they won like 10-0? Yeah, he didn't get out. Um, number two is Landon Plout with a 500 batting average. Uh, like I said, not too many games, so his stats can be increased or decreased. So he just had to base it off his first game. ERA leader, we said we implemented that he must be over three innings. He must have pitched over three innings. And lucky for Mikey, he pitched the whole last game. He pitched the whole last game, which and he didn't give up one run. I think he gave up like two hits. So he is the number one ERA uh, leader. I'm in at number two with a .50 ERA. Pitching strikeouts, um, yeah, it, it, it's me at 17. Like, the Piranhas, they couldn't hit me. Uh, they had one hit off of me, and I just struck everyone out. Um, number two is Bradley at 12. Then it's a huge drop-off at, at number three. It's five, and that's Gavin, but... Everything will be a lot better because Derek struck out a bunch of people, and yeah. Um, and then for the final category that I marked was innings. I um, pitched just a total of six. Bradley pitched a total of 5.2. And then number three, sneaky, uh, Ryan Vinci, 4.1. So, um, so yeah. And um, now we're going to go to the all-star race. And then after, we're going to talk about some updated trades and moves. So the all-star race is just right now. We're actually gonna have a bunch of people vote on who you're gonna, who you think is gonna make it. Uh, right now, I have the captains being me and Bradley. Um, I don't know about the Bradley one. I think Jess did a little better, maybe, but uh, we're just gonna have to see what Bradley does uh, this week. This week's a very big week for him. He needs to get on those stat sheets, um, and he wants to be the captain. I know that for a fact. Whoever wins the All-Star game actually gets a home field advantage in the World Series. So, 
Um, so yeah, me and Brad are starters for the Western Conference and Eastern Conference. Um, some starters for the Western Conference, uh, inc not including me, is Daniel and Brandon Chip. So leader in RBIs and leader in average starting for the Western Conference. And me, I'm also starting because I'm the captain. Uh, starters on the Eastern Conference, not including Bradley, is Jess Vacuna and Landon Plout. Um, I think Derek's going to overtake Landon as a starter. Uh, we just, I just put this in. Um, I just put this in before, but uh, it's going to be up to you guys to vote. Um, on three bench spots for the Western Conference, Matthew Sikic, Ryan Vinci, and Mikey Pion. And for the Eastern Conference, Derek Talon Keaton. The Western Conference is a lot more stacked. Keaton has not got a hit all year, but he had uh, like a five, five something ERA, and then no one else, no one else got hits, and everyone else had a higher ERA. So like Keaton, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, man. But he made, he made, the, he's making the All Star game, excluding if if Rockham went to the Eastern Conference, he would probably be a starter. But he's in the Western Conference, and he's on the bench, so. Um, so yeah, so we're finally going to go into the final trades and moves that happened. Um, so it was official. I told you guys a couple weeks ago that Bradley signed Damian. It was not official. It was just up in the air. We were pretty sure that he was that he was going to sign, but we did get the confirmation today that he did sign with the Golden Eagles, and he will be playing this week for his game. This is going to be great for Bradley. And then uh, you guys saw Jess Facuna. He was a sub for... The uh, Piranhas last game, and uh, he did have three offers uh, from the Golden Eagles, from the Piranhas, and from the Sea Dogs, and he ended up going with the Piranhas uh, just so that he could have a better chance at a title because the three best teams, right, uh, two best teams are me and the Base Invaders, so he wanted to be in an opposite conference and uh, sign with the Piranhas because maybe he, I think the Sea Dogs gave a better offer, but um, they're just in a stacked conference with with my team and the base invaders. Um, so yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Um, make sure to comment down below, which we should talk about. We went over a lot of stuff, pretty in depth. Um, comment down below. If you think we should keep doing this, these do not get as many views. Uh, and do you know what's funny guys? Um, when the sea dogs played the base invaders, I got like 75 views. And then when the dinger nation played the prawns, I got like 25. So, um, and these get like 15 or 20 every time, but, uh, I like doing these. These are pretty fun, but please comment down below if you want to see this more, uh, make sure to like subscribe. We are super close to 50. We are at 49. See you guys next week.